Hello Game Boys and Game Girls, I'm the Game Boy Guru and welcome to another pickups video. It's been a while since I've done one of these, uh, about a month, and matter of fact. Uh, I've kind of slowed down on the pickups and I'm um, trying to do uh, less pickups and make them a bit more meaningful, uh, fill in a few holes and, you know, take advantage of the occasional deal when it comes along. And so, um, why don't I just get started and show you what I got. So one of my pickups early in the month was a box for Whip Rush on the Sega Genesis. I've had the cartridge of this game for almost 20 years now, uh, but I've never had the box or the manual. Uh, there was somebody selling the manual on eBay, and I think I missed it because uh, the auction disappeared. But I got the box for a decent price, so now I just need the manual so that I can uh, fill that out. But uh, pretty cool to have that, and I'll be able to add that to my Genesis shelf over here shortly. Uh, <clears throat> Want to give a big shout out to fellow RFGeneration.com member Tinstar, who hooked me up with some manuals and a couple of goodies. So one of the coolest things that he hooked me up with was this uh, box and manual for a Neo Geo Pocket Color game, Neo 21. And so you can see the manual's tucked away in there, but it is a complete box for this game. And uh, of course, it's just, uh, just a blackjack game, but still, uh, I don't own any Neo Geo Pocket Color stuff yet, and so this has the distinction of being the first. So thank you very much for that. <clears throat> Also hooked me up with some cool manuals and stuff. This was a fun one. It's a, not a manual per se, but an insert that goes with Caesar's Palace for the Game Boy. And uh, if you can see here, it's kind of a like a map of the casino to show you what each of the areas is um, in terms of the slot machine, cashier, the poker, video poker, the roulette wheel, blackjack tables, etc. So. A really neat item that uh, um, came with the original game, one assumes, and uh, will be nice to add to my man my manual collection. Got uh, some other cool manuals here. I got a Nintendo 64 Game Shark manual. I don't have a Game Shark for the 64 yet, but once I do, it'll be nice to be able to reference that. Uh, I got the Super Game Boy manual for uh, Galaga and Galaxian. Just kind of an explanation of, you know, using the this uh, arcade cart with the Super Game Boy and, you know, showing a couple of screenshots of the games in color. So that's a neat little piece. Um, I think I, I actually have the manual itself, but not this insert. So this is nice to be able to complete that. And of course, he hooked me up with some Game Boy manuals. So I got Missile Command, Donkey Kong, one of the best games on the system, Space Invaders, which is fantastic since the uh, Game Boy version of Space Invaders uh, has the Super Game Boy capabilities and all the extra features that go with that. And I got an extra copy of Tetris. Um, and actually, this is the a second printing because if you look at the the uh, title there, it's got the two at the end. So I think this is slightly different than the other Tetris manual I have. So very cool to have that. He also uh, threw in a couple of of uh, solid state hard drives for me to use. So one of these will most likely be getting used to mod my. PS2 that's been sitting around languishing. So again, Tinstar on ArfGeneration.com. Thank you for hooking me up with that stuff. Another cool item that I got uh, is this WeSD memory adapter. Uh, it's a GameCube memory card essentially that has a slot for an SD card in it. And it mentions all kinds of cool stuff you can do on the back, an SD loader, and some cool stuff like that. I know there's an SD loader that works uh, specifically with one version of 
the action replay for GameCube. Um, but I'm hoping this, I'll be able to do other things with it. So I'm going to have to do some research. But uh, this was only a couple of bucks, so I figured it was worth picking up. Um, I also bought <coughs> a couple of Sega Genesis shells, just a couple of blank shells. In uh, Pickup's video a while back, I showed off a couple of the items I got from DB Electronics, the Powerbase Mini FM, and then also the um, uh, the Sega CD backup RAM uh, board. And so one of those will go into a cartridge just like this. The other one I'm going to have to either Dremel or something to kind of cut out and make a space for the the SMS cartridge plug to go in there. But this is what I ordered was this blue shell. And then, of course, it comes with the 3.8 millimeter game bit screws. I ordered two of these. Unfortunately, I got one that was the right kind that I ordered. And then I got one that wasn't quite what I ordered. Um, I got a purple shell, which doesn't bother me. The purple is cool also. However, this did not come with the screws. So thankfully the vendor is going to uh, refund me. I asked for a partial refund. He said he'd give me a full one, uh, which was nice. But I'm going to have to order some additional game bit screws so I can make this work for the other purpose. Either way, should be nice to finally get that going and uh, get that functionality working for my system. Um, I ordered some additional stuff online. So I got some manuals. I've kind of signed up to get notifications about some things. Finally got a manual for Subterranea for the Genesis. I've had a boxed copy of this for years and years, but it never had the manual. So now I can finally complete my copy. I also got manuals for a couple of NES games. Uh, I've decided to try and buy manuals for a lot of my shoot 'em up games since I've started the shoot 'em up. Uh, the Shmup Club for RF Generation, and I'm doing the podcast now, I figure I might as well at least have some of these instruction manuals to refer to. So I got a manual for Tiger Heli, and I also got a manual for 1942. And uh, it's a little confusing, this 1942 manual, even though uh, you can see it says 1942 down in the corner, it's just plain text, whereas up in the uh, top right, it says Captain Commando, and it's got a Captain Commando uh, person on there. So it almost looks like it's a manual for a Captain Commando game, which, of course, never appeared on the NES. So it's slightly confusing, but uh, I think it was just Capcom's early stuff before they had established better branding on the NES. Still kind of a neat uh, and interesting piece. And I finally also got... Burai Fighter Deluxe for the Game Boy and uh, had the NES version for years, been looking for the Game Boy version, finally decided to just bite the bullet and order it um, so that I can have this to compare um, and play. Uh, I went to a local garage sale here a couple weekends ago. Uh, there was someone in our, the local uh, Facebook retro gaming group that needed to liquidate some stuff and sell some stuff out of his storage unit that he's got. And so um, I picked up a few things. I got this uh, this PS2 wireless controller from, looks like, Katana. Um, I don't know much about it. He said that uh, from what he understood it was pretty good. Um, needs a little bit of cleanup and TLC, but otherwise it's uh, in reasonable shape, so we'll give that a try. We got some original PlayStation games here. We got Sim Theme Park, or Sim Theme Park, uh, Rayman Rush, we got The Land Before Time Great Valley Racing Adventure which I know Easy Racer will be uh, smiling about. And then also Rayman Brain Games. <clears throat> Got one Sega Genesis game, and that is NBA Live 96, 
which is complete and even has uh, the uh, $10 coupon and the little EA Sports 96 lineup booklet. So that's pretty cool to have. Uh, I'm not much of a sports game person, but uh, some of these are, are kind of neat to have nonetheless. One Wii game, which is Rayman Origins. That's the Rayman game I'm actually uh, excited to have there out of the bunch. A whole bunch of PS2 games here. Got Sonic Heroes. Splashdown. Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Naruto, Ultimate Ninja. Whiteout. Evil Dead, A Fistful of Boomstick, which I already have on the Xbox. The Simpsons Hit and Run. And The Punisher. Also got some 360 and Xbox stuff. There's a kind of a steel book of Call of Duty Ghosts, and I know this came on a, in a bigger set with some more stuff, but uh, it's still kind of cool to have that nonetheless. Disney Pixar Cars, Gears of War 3, so I finally have that. Got Oddworld, much as Odyssey, Platinum Hits. So now I've got the standard and Platinum Hits versions. CSI. And Constantine. And uh, one more PlayStation 2 game, but this is its own thing. And that is Disney Think Fast Trivia. This is complete, uh, as you can see, with this controller here. And I think this is kind of the same controller as the... Uh, Buzz series of games. I don't know if they're compatible or not. I'll have to double check that, but this is kind of a neat uh, Disney film trivia and stuff like that. Might be fun, um, especially since um, this is the PS2 era, so most of the Disney movies this will be referencing are things that I have most likely seen. I stopped by a local game store randomly the other day and picked up a couple of things. Got some original Xbox games. Got the Intellivision Lives, which was fun to get a hold of. Got Defender. And also NARC, which was cool because this actually comes with the ability to unlock, uh, I believe you can unlock, yeah, the original NARC arcade game. So Honestly, that's the uh, that's the reason to own this for me to get that arcade version of Narc. But uh, who knows? Maybe the actual game itself is fun too. Also got a couple of PSP games uh, to scratch off the list. So Hannah Montana, Rock the Show, Rock Out the Show, and Lego Indiana Jones Greatest Hits. Uh, I've had the regular LEGO Indiana Jones for a while, so now Greatest Hits. Um, winding down here, I did get one of the things that I pre-ordered from Play Asia, and that is my Nintendo Switch Special Edition of Dimension Drive. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, this is a shoot 'em up that uh, uses a kind of dual play field system where you can jump back and forth between the two sides of the screen and uh, attack bosses and enemies and kind of traverse the levels in that manner. But this is a nice package with the embossed title. It's got a soundtrack CD, came with a sticker and a nice little art card that's double-sided. And uh, it also has an art book inside and certificate of authenticity uh, and so a lot of these uh, really nice packaged items from East Asia soft coming exclusively through play Asia um, so glad to have this and be able to throw that on the shelf and 
and then at some point pop that into the switch so I can actually play. And finally, my big or biggest pickup of the month is it was a bit of a splurge and it was a bit of a, a thing that I did. Uh, I don't want to say on a whim, but I did. Um, well, I guess it was kind of on a whim because I found out about it and <clears throat> took care, I took kind of went for it. And that is, I got a PC Engine with an interface unit. So let me show you all what I got here. So first and foremost, one, two, and three controllers. Now, of course, those of you familiar with Turbo Graphics and the PC Engine know that the system only has one controller port unless you use a turbo tap or similar accessory to expand that. So if I want to do multiplayer games, I'll have to, of course, buy something that will allow me to do that. Um, but this is going to be the pad that I'll use. The other two need a little bit of TLC. Um, one of them, I could not get the left side of the D-pad to work. So I probably need to tear it apart and kind of alcohol things. Uh, maybe boil the, the membrane for a few seconds to kind of loosen it up. So... I'll have to do that, but uh, this is a nice controller that felt pretty good when I was playing it. Along with the uh, PC Engine, I got a, a nice um, AC adapter or um, power adapter here from Retro Game Cave that the gentleman who sold it to me uh, included. And so that's nice because then I don't have to buy a, a switching adapter or something like that. Uh, I got some nice cables here. A um, couple of, of SCART cables. So this is a uh, Sega Genesis Model 2 or Mega Drive Model 2 SCART cable. Uh, of course it's got the pin out there for the back of the console and then the RGB SCART connector here uh, so that I can use this with something like uh, um, an OSSC or a an RGB SCART uh, adapter to use with uh, like a frame meister or that kind of a thing. Or similarly, I can plug that into this end here and then run this to a PVM. And so I've got my, my uh, multiple cables here for RGB and sync. And then the audio there that goes to this thing, which I can use for a single uh, stereo input. So that's pretty cool. But the reason that it came with all of these things, um, which would be unusual because of the whole Sega Genesis Model 2, is because of this RGB board, which plugs into the pin set on the back of the PC Engine or the TurboGrafx-16 and then offers the ability to do either composite component or the Genesis Model 2 uh, connector there. There's a little switcher on the side here to switch between RCA and MD2. So you can switch it uh, over to where it'll specifically go to this uh, for the audio. And uh, this is a neat little board. Um, the unfortunate part is, uh, of course, because typically when you plug it into the system, um, it doesn't have any way to secure itself. So you really either, you really have to use this and put it in place where you're not gonna move it or touch it because it is a little bit touchy. And if, it, if the pin set comes loose, then your connection will, will be compromised. But uh, a really neat item that I was glad to get uh, along with the PC Engine. Uh, the other item that I got that I'm not going to show because I forgot to bring it in here before I started recording is I got a Turbo EverDrive uh, version 2.1 uh, or 2.2, I think. I don't remember which it is. But uh, yeah, Turbo EverDrive. So now I finally have that and that will allow me to start using some of that stuff. But the actual um, PC Engine piece here is uh, the base console, 
It's got the system card 2.1, the CD-ROM system card, and then of course the interface unit. And so at some point what I'm going to want to do is get the actual CD-ROM 2 portion to go here, and then I can output power and um, composite video there, or uh, I may look into possibly getting this IFU um, modded for some other kind of RGB output. So we'll see. Um, for right now, I'm just happy to have this. Um, it is officially my first Japanese console that I own, um, you know, Japanese region console. Um, I was hoping that might be a Saturn or an Xbox 360, but cool that it's this nonetheless. That's all I have to show off this time. Uh, I think that's uh, plenty, uh, plenty of pickups for me over the last month. That pretty much encompasses uh, everything that I got during the month of August. Uh, if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and also subscribe if you like this kind of content to let me know that you want more. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Game Boy Guru. I'll have a link in the description below to my blog where you can read my Game Boy game reviews and keep up on that. Uh, that is GameBoyGuru.blogspot.com. Also make sure you check out Nira and his channel. He provided the Super Mario Land overworld music that I use as the intro for all my videos. And he has a bunch of other great chiptune and game music content as well. So make sure you go check that out. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and game on.